Good morning, everybody. How you doing? This has been a try morning. When I tell you the devil is busy, he is really, really busy, but we're not defeated. So I praise and thank God for you. I decided that since we couldn't get on, Zoom is down. Zoom is down nationwide. Um, free conference call is unstable because I guess everybody's trying to get on there. Um, and so I didn't want to risk that um, getting on there and not being able to get everybody stable. Um, so what I'm doing is recording the video of the message today and you're going to get this and you're still going to be blessed. We're going to go right on and hopefully by next week we will be a little bit more stable with Zoom because everybody's using Zoom across the world. And I guess they actually were not prepared um, for everything that's going to come. So let's get right into it. Um, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to pray this morning and to come together, God. We thank you for having workarounds in place that we may continue to complete the task. We thank you that the word of the Lord will go forth unhindered, uninterrupted, and that people will still be blessed in spite of any interference. Thank you, God, and we give you praise. Amen and thank God. So listen, I want to talk today um, and in kind of continuing from where we left off, we've been talking about our lives lost in translation. And there's so many components to this issue of our lives being lost in translation. In fact, what we spend most of our lives doing is trying to recapture lost time. We're trying to get into the redemption of time. And so this message is going to impact you in ways that's going to get you caught up to the place and time you should be in, okay? So I wanna use some metaphoric language out of the scriptures today to be able to help you understand where you are and what God is saying in this hour. And I want to do that, and I know that this had to be the enemy to interrupt us this morning, because one of the prophetic words that the Lord gave me over the weekend is that at any moment, God is going to shift you from waiting on it to walking into it. Isn't that powerful? You think about that. All of us are waiting on something. We're in preparation for something. We're trying to wait on something to happen. And the Lord said to me, tell the people at any moment, what they've been waiting on, they're going to end up walking in too. So be excited about that. Get excited about that because all it takes is one conversation, one meeting to line you up with the next thing for your life. But I want to use for, for our scripture reference this morning, Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 11. Chapter 12 of Proverbs, verse number 11. And I really want you to get this in your spirit and hear it from a prophetic standpoint, right? All right. The scriptures say in verse number 11, chapter 12 of Proverbs, he that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Now, I want you to understand the metaphoric language in the scripture this morning. He that tilleth his land. Land is representing the mind, all right? This is your mind. It's, it's representing your mind today. Get that, that my land is my mind. We're not just talking about physical land now, but we're looking metaphorically and we're saying that our mind is the land. One of the things that you can be sure about is if you do not cultivate your mind, the world will cultivate it free of charge. You have to get that in your spirit. You have to cultivate your mind for success, prosperity, increase, love, peace, happiness, joy. You've got to cultivate your mind. You must till that land of your mind until it is ready to produce something positive in your life. God has given us a lot of laws, um, the laws of prosperity, the laws of the kingdom, the kingdom laws that we learn to follow in order to get the blessings of the Lord. The Lord just does not give us blessings randomly. Trust me when I tell you. But the blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow are, are obtained when we follow the laws of the kingdom. When we follow the laws of the kingdom and we're able to see what God is really saying to us, then we are able to get increased like you won't believe, all right? So he that tilleth his mind, he who cultivates his mind, 
can get it prepared to receive the very blessings of God. But if your mind has not been cultivated, if that land has not been tilled, how then can it ever produce anything? Do you know poverty does not begin in your purse, pocketbook, wallet, or bank account? Poverty starts in the mind. People are poor in their mind. You can give people a million dollars, and if their mind is poverty stricken, they'll blow through that money and not know what to do with it because they don't have the, they don't have the mindset to do it. Their mindset cannot wrap around wealth, prosperity, opulence, because it's poor. They are poor in mind. Prosperity begins in the mind. When one's mind has been cultivated to prosper, to increase, to live better, trust me when I tell you, you will begin to see increase like you've never seen before. If the mind has not been properly cultivated, it cannot produce anything but what's in it. If that's nothingness, it'll be nothingness. But when that mind has been cultivated and tilled up right, thinking about the land, whenever you get ready to get to harvest, you've got to till that land. You've got to cultivate that soil so that the seeds that are planted on there have a place to grow and to be nourished properly. So it is with the mind. So it is with the mind. Um, in, in, in Romans, we read in the scripture, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Whenever you're ready to shift from season to season, there must be a period where you reteal that ground, that you cultivate that ground again for the new thing that you're praying for, the thing that you are believing God for. You have to get a new mindset. Oftentimes, people are trying to go places that uh, their mind can't handle, their spirit can't handle, because they've not taken the time to cultivate their mind to assess what would it take for me not only to get there, but to exist in that season in peace. That's very heavy to me. That is very, very heavy to me. Um, then the scripture goes on to say, uh, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Now, this is where we get, it gets real tricky because oftentimes we're listening to people tell us how to do a thing. How, well, this is all you got to do. Uh, all you need to do is stop. And I'm not saying that we don't get wisdom from people or that we don't get advice from people because that's absolutely one of the things that we must do. However, uh, when you're following vain persons, then you are, are, are actually walking in ill counsel. Now, that takes us to this. Let's go over here to Psalms real quick. Psalm number one, all right? And this is, listen to what the scripture says. Psalm number one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. I don't know what that is flying around here. Um, I want you to really think about that for a moment. Um, we have to totally understand that many times we're sitting in the counsel of people who are not godly. I'm not talking about, see, just because a person goes to church does not mean that they're godly. We need to get that in our mind. It doesn't mean they're godly. Godly people are people who follow the commands of God, who pray and seek the most high's direction. You don't have to go to church for that. I know more spiritual people that don't go to church than folk that are in the church. I see more carnality and, and, and foolishness with people that are in church every week. But you're sitting in council of people who do not consider the laws of God, who do not consider what it is God is saying or doing in this season. And we take their counsel and we run with it. And then once we hear uh, real godly counsel, we're trying to weigh the vain counsel or the ungodly counsel against those who are godly uh, in their thinking, in their prayer life. That's why I don't want uh, us to get caught up in well, I'll have to talk to people that go to church or if they're in church all the time, then that makes them godly. This is a critical mistake. Do not assume that because a person is in church all the time that they got godly advice for you. God has to lead you to people who he's anointed to help you in the season that you're in. 
That's a godly person. Sit and walk in the counsel of a godly person, one who considers God in their affairs. And so this is where we need to really uh, put our, our focus today is that I need to cultivate my mind for where I'm trying to go. That means I've got to stop for a moment because tilling ground is difficult. I remember growing up and my granddad had a garden and we had the, uh, the, the tiller and we had the one that you really had to walk behind, right? And that was a lot of work. You had to plumb the line. You got to turn that soil over and over and over. It's a lot of work. That's the mind work that we must do in order to be properly prepared for where we are going. When your mind is still the same last season's thoughts, season before last thought, um, year before last, thinking the same way you've been thinking all your life without saying, you know what, I'm praying for greater. If I'm praying for greater, then the ground, my mind has got to expand in order to walk in a greater place. It's really simple. If the mind cannot accommodate the place you're trying to pray into, if your mind has not been changed into that dimension and that season, then guess what? You can't walk in that land. What was the problem with the Hebrews? Their mind was still Egypt when their prayer was Canaan. And you think about that for a moment. They were praying for Canaan, wishing for Canaan, but their mind was still in Egypt. It was proven when they were uh, desiring the food from Egypt. They would even desired to go back to Egypt because they got challenged. Their minds never changed. Moses spent most of his time trying to convince God not to kill them because God wanted to kill them. He was so frustrated. He was like, I just want to kill them. I want to kill them because their minds had never been cultivated for Canaan. Your mind has to be cultivated for the promised land you're praying to go into. And so this is why, you know, in the, in the, in the black community, bread was, 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 was uh, money was called bread, right? Yeah, man, I need to get that bread. Sometimes we call it cheese now. Um, but, but bread is a commodity. You think about it. Even in this pandemic, people were going to the store making sure they had bread, eggs, milk, but bread is a commodity. It's a precious commodity. And in scripture, bread always represents something of substance and greatness. So again, if you don't till that mind, you can't get no bread. It's just that simple. You are not going to get your bread until your mind has been cultivated and tilled and worked for what you're praying for. And one thing about God is God is very orderly. You know, God is very, he's, he's the God of order. Um, and we have to, that it requires a deeper unpacking because we're thinking that God just does random stuff. But God is very calculated. The Most High is calculated in whatever he does. When he begins to insert dreams into your spirit, he is calculated what it's going to take for you, you, us, me, to get involved in the process. And that's going to be critical for you. It's going to be very critical. God, I'm asking you to do this. I'm wanting to go here. I would love to expand my business. I'm trying to bless my family. Whatever it is, he's saying, well, let's till the ground of your mind because you must have a mindset of increase. You must have a mindset of greater. If your mindset is still little, small thinking, um, uh, little, you know, a convenient you're not ready for Canaan. You're not ready yet. So now we must go back and till this ground up. We've got to till this ground up until it is ready to produce. Because remember now, if the mind has been tilled and properly cultivated, it will show you ideas. It will point to you where you should be going. You will see things that are normally hidden. Uh, and even if they are hidden, if your mind is right, you can see better. Why? Because the brain controls vision. So if my mind has been properly cultivated, I'm able to see solutions that I had not seen before. Once you get your mind renewed, once your mind has been properly cultivated for the next thing, all of a sudden, everything that looked difficult makes sense now. I can do this. I see it. This is the one thing that we see often in scripture. 
is where people are, are looking for solutions. When David, uh, the Philistines came up against David uh, in Samuel, uh, they had heard that he had been anointed king over Israel and they set to attack him. Well, the first thing he did was he inquired of the Lord, the scriptures say, and David inquired of the Lord, what should I do? Should I go up against the Philistines? And he waited until God gave him an instruction, but his mind had been cultivated to do what first? Seek the Lord, to seek the Lord. That's the first principle. Whenever you get an idea, you need to seek the Lord. Some people feel like, well, I don't need to do that because I'm intelligent. I don't need to do that because it's, it's, you know, it's just a matter of doing it. But you're breaking the laws of God. The first thing you must do is to seek the Lord. And I don't know why people have a problem with that, that it's supposed to be saved, but you want God to bless something. How do you want God to bless something that you're not willing to seek him on? All you're doing is saying, God, I don't know what to do in this. I have an idea, but I need more from you. So tell me how to get this done in a fashion that will be glorified, glor glorifying you rather, and then get me what I need. David understood the power of inquiring of God. You've got to be okay inquiring of God. And if you aren't okay with that, you need to ask yourself, why do I have such a problem asking God for help? But I want him to bless the, 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 the thing that I'm doing, the fruits of my labor. I want him to bless the work of my hand. Then why do you have such a problem inquiring of God to just ask him, God, I would like to do this. How do you see uh, me doing this? What do you think? What are you seeing? What are you, uh, what's your next instruction to me? Why do you have a problem with that? You need to be able to inquire of the Lord. All right. Inquire of the Lord. Stop walking in the counsel of people that you think have all the answers before inquiring of the Lord. You know what God will do? He will send you to the right person who doesn't mind sharing information. See, when you inquire of the Lord, sure, he doesn't circumvent processes through uh, other people, but what he will do is say, don't ask Beverly, ask Jean. Go over there and ask Willie Mae, she know how to get it done, okay? You got to be okay with that. So inquiring of the Lord should not offend you because if it does, it means that there is a problem with pride and arrogance and that needs to be uprooted out of you. Maybe that's your frustration is because you need to be inquiring of the Lord and you're trying to go on your own uh, being so independent, but you need to inquire of the Lord. God, is there a quicker way? You see? And so one thing that I found out, and I want to insert this, is many delays that we experience in our life is because God is trying to work out of us arrogance, pride, um, insecurities, all of these things God is working out of us. So he delays the promise until all of that is worked out of us. We're so busy thinking that's the devil. God got a problem with us. When we need to be saying, well, God, what are you working out of me? The, 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 the delay is not because I've done anything wrong. The delay is that you see something in me that's not going to work in Canaan. It's some Egyptian type behavior that I'm on that I cannot take in Canaan. It's not going to work in Canaan. You've got to be okay with that. You've got to be perfectly all right with that. Because once you get to your promise, you want your conduct to be able to keep you there. You do not want to get to be like them Hebrews that started showing out before they got into the promised land and they died not getting in there. Even their leader Moses died and was not able to get into the promised land. And so this is critical. This is mandatory that you get this today, that what you're doing is you're now cultivating the land, cultivating your mind, tilling up that ground so you can walk uh, uh, in, a, in an intelligent way, a spiritual way into your promised land. And so don't minimize the delay because the delay is strategic. Now I don't know who this is for, but if that word is true at any moment, what you've been waiting on, you're going to be walking into, then you have to remember that even your delays are strategic laws of God. Whatever the delay is, it is a strategy God is using to empty you out of all of that past stuff that's not going to work where you're going. That's the word of the Lord today. Is that some, there, there, there's some stuff in you that God is saying, yeah, 
uh, that worked two seasons ago, but it's not going to work in this season. And you've got to allow God to surgically remove all of those things that are not going to work in this season, whether it's fear, whether it's doubt, whether it's insecurities of, or feelings of inadequacy, whatever those things are that may be bothering you. God is saying, I'll delay that until you get that out of you because we won't have time in the promised land for you to be dealing with insecurities and doubts and fears because you're going to be in it. So we're going to delay it until you can work through that. That's why you got to be willing, people of God, to do the work, do the work prior to getting there. The delay is really beneficial to you. The delay, um, or sometimes God will push the pause button. The delay is to make sure that by the time you get into that place where you've been praying, you get in there, you don't have time to be trying to revisit a pre-existing condition. All right. You want to get that healed. You want to get that deliverance, that, 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 that deliverance rather that you need. You want to get that prior to going into the promised land so that you can enjoy. You know what I found out is a lot of people get into the season they've been praying for because God is good like that way. But then it starts looking like where they came from, not because it's a bad situation they're in now. It's because they brought with them unresolved issues that should have been dealt with. All right. And so God now gives us through intellectual discourse this morning, uh, our intellectual, spiritual discourse, that the delays sometimes are so strategic that they are to empty you out of anything that will interfere with your enjoyment of the place you've been praying to get in. All right. So I'm just going to end the message right there. I think that this is enough for you to work with. And again, we thank God we didn't, we weren't able to uh, uh, meet our usual way this morning, uh, usual way this morning. And that's okay. But I, I hope this video blesses you. Um, we thank God. Listen, you know what we do concerning our giving. Um, you can just text give or you can send it through PayPal. Uh, whatever, Givelify is not an option anymore. And so um, just give as you normally would. I appreciate it. Thank God for you. Um, and so I hope that all is well with you. Um, once you receive this link to see this video, um, all of the giving information will also be in that, in, that um, email um, that you will receive. And so hopefully by next week, I'll keep you posted on what Zoom is doing. Hopefully we will be looking at some other means of, of, of having some alternate ways to get on just in case Zoom doesn't work anymore. And again, my deepest apologies um, for this technical difficulty. Uh, but thank God for you. I pray for you. And I'm going to pray before you pray for you before we leave. Father, thank you for all the people that will watch this video and even those that will share this video with others. I thank you, I bless you, and I glorify you. I thank you that your people are being blessed and that they are learning as they go to trust you even more, to trust you with everything that you're doing, to trust the process and to enjoy the process as they are going along. And I give you praise for it. I thank you for it, God, in the name of our matchless God. Amen and thank God. God bless you. Until we meet again, be blessed of the Lord.